Hi everybody, it's Rory here, how are you? Um, I haven't done a video in a long time, so I decided it's time I had to do one. And because I've had bronchitis for the last few months, I was just terrified I'd probably start coughing and spluttering all over the place. I wouldn't have been able anyway. So here we go, I'm doing a video, and look at this photograph. Um, this is me with my dad. Um, it must have been taken about 1959, early 1960, because I'm a baby. Um, and that's when I was born, I'm 60 this year. But this is my dad. And the thing about my dad, the thing about these photographs is I'm going through albums. I have albums upon albums here and I need to go through them because I finished my book. The book that I've been talking about for ages, I've now finished it and it is finished. And all I have to do now is just pick the photographs that have to go with it. So I'm delighted with that. And I went up to my mother's house. Well, my brother's house now, but my old mother's house. Um, God love her. She died in November. Um, she had dementia and I know you all know about that because I spoke about it But I needed to get photographs and I had to go up into her attic and get all these and I have a box of them over there I have boxes of photographs and I've got to go through them all because the publishers want them yesterday So I, I'll go up to them tomorrow. I'll go through them all tonight and get them out um, So the book is finished All I have to do is pick out the photographs and that's going to be great And it's wonderful to go through all these albums to see the old photographs that's in them I mean, it's absolutely brilliant I mean, there's photographs of me when I was on holidays when I was a kid. Um, there's me with my Auntie Eileen, she died. There's a picture of my mother with me. Have you turned around for a story? Yeah, we were in the zoo. There's loads of photographs here. These are oh, fabulous. There's your yeah, these are all old photographs here. And my sister, that's Clown McNoise. I know what that is. Um, I'm looking at them, them all upside down now. Um, but these are great, these are terrific photographs, great old photographs to have. And I haven't seen them in years upon years. There's my father with his mother. Now this one here, his mother, she died in 1955. And uh, believe it or not, the day after she died, that's when my father met my mother. Because his friends had wanted to take him out to try and cheer him up because his mother had just died. So they went to a Cayley in the mansion house in Dublin in November 1955. And that's where my dad met my mother. So there you go. Um, anyway, that's that. That's what those ones are. You also know I've got two cats there at the front. They're playing at the moment. Pebbles and Bam Bam. They're wrecking the house. But I wouldn't. I love them. I absolutely adore them. Uh, they're wonderful. They're two kittens and one kitten I've seen before and they're mad. Two kittens together. They're doubly mental. They just... <laughs> I, all I do is laugh at them. As I said, they wreck me house. They've torn all my furniture. If you can see, look, they've scratched all my chairs and everything like that. <laughs> but I don't care. They're adorable. I love them. They're fabulous. So they would probably come in here now and be jumping around the place because they've started this thing. And it's so funny to see. They try to chase flies. Now, they never catch them. They will never catch a fly, but they're jumping all around the place trying to catch them. Um, but the one good thing about it, if they did catch them, it would be great. But they don't. And uh, but it stops me using fly killer, which is going to please uh, please Avery no end because he was always giving out to me for killing flies. I swear to God, I think he was a Buddhist in a previous life because he wouldn't kill anything. Whereas me, my pet hate is flies. I'm I'm always hand out trying to get the can and spray them, and he goes mad. Um, so I haven't done that because. Why giving you your cough? That's probably <laughs> I probably did. I probably poisoned myself. <laughs> I could have done it. I probably poisoned myself. It served me right, I suppose, for doing it. Uh, what else is there? I'm going to um, Israel uh, soon. I'm going over for the Eurovision. And I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to have a great time over there. It'll be a lovely time to go because it'll be May and June. And the weather's going to be lovely. I can't wait to get back there. Um, visit all my friends. I've loads of friends over there that I've made over the years. Um, oh, one other thing that I did, and some of you might know, but some of you might not know. This is a guitar. I don't know how to play it, but it's a guitar. It's a Gibson guitar, as you can see. Gibson. Now, what happened with this is, I was at a charity ball just before Christmas. Um, there's a very well-known celebrity in Ireland, a lovely guy, and his name is Julian Benson. And Julian Benson is the longest surviving uh, cystic fibrosis patient in Ireland. He's had cystic fibrosis longer than anybody. And um, he's a big star on television, on Dancing with the Stars. He's a judge on that. And he is brilliant. And his attitude is fabulous. And everything is great about him. I love him. Um, but he has cystic fibrosis. And just before Christmas, he had his first ever... Um, he set up this Julian Benson Cystic Fibrosis Foundation to raise money for uh, research and to help people who have cystic fibrosis. Ah, uh, listen, there's 
pebbles there. Look at her. Hello, puss. What's up with you? What's up with you? Can you not catch flies? Can you not? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Are you coming up here? No, don't. I don't like I don't like you up on the table. <laughs> here's me. Here's me saying, oh, come up on this. Come up here. That's only for the camera. But then you can't say to her afterwards, don't be on the table because you're not inviting her. Anyway, here I was with this guitar. I think when you go to a, a ball uh, and it's a fundraising ball, you have to spend money. You have to... That's what, they, that's what you're invited for. Um, they want to raise money. And Julian invited me. And there's a big meal at it, um, which all these balls are. And you've got to cover, like, what's up with your puss? Come over to me. What's wrong with you? I'm only talking to all the people. <laughs> and they all know about you. They love you. Listen, I'm turning into my mother here. Listen, I talk to these cats as if they were, <laughs> as if they were humans. <laughs> Where's your brother gone? Where is he? Where's your brother? Tell him I want him. <laughs> I talk to them like they're humans. It's ridiculous. And I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to do that. We always had dogs. And she used to do that. Who's a good boy? Who's blah, blah, all this type of stuff. Are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? And I would... Look, there he's trying to climb the curtains now. I swear to God, they, they have me house wrecked. But anyway, I'm turning into my mother. I talk to the, the animals like they're humans. Um, Dr. Doolittle. Um, that's me now. Anyway, this guitar. I believe that when you go to a, a charity ball and it's a, fun, it's a fundraiser, you have to spend money. So I was looking at, look at now, ah, look, Avery, try and get that. Can you get him over? No, you can't. It's too late. No, you can't. You can't. Um, he's up there jumping down. It's too late. Oh, there he is. He's up there now again. Look. And look at all the stuff on the table. That's all the stuff I need from I don't usually have the house this untidy. That's boxes of photographs. That's what they all are. Boxes of photographs. So in case you think I have a manky house, it's not. That's just what that is. That's what they are. <laughs> Anyway, <coughs> just bronchitis. I'm, I'm just over it. As I was saying, I think when you go to a fundraiser, a, a, a charity fundraiser, you, it's, the obligation is on you to spend money. That's what they want. They want to raise money. So I was looking at what was on, was in the auction, and there was lots of th there was loads of things. People donate. People are fabulous. They donate wonderful things. Now there was a car. I didn't want a car because I have one. Um, there was holidays to Dubai. I have no interest to go to Dubai whatsoever. And there was uh, tickets to football matches and uh, Manchester United or Ireland games. I had no interest because I don't go to, I'm not a football fan. Um, and I thought, well, somebody else is and let them buy them. Um, but the one thing I did that did spark my imagination was this guitar. It was owned by Niall Horan from One Direction. And he's now solo. He's at the have this fabulous album called Flicker. And... Uh, what happened with this is this was on he's played this guitar on every date on his world tour the flicker world world tour and he donated this to be auctioned and i bought it and um i paid four thousand euro for it and it's a wonderful 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 piece of equipment to get a gibson guitar and with a history to it and he signed it as you can see here it says rory thank you what does it say Thank you for your generosity. Best wishes, Niall Horan. Um, so I had this and I decided, so I bought it and it was wonderful because all that money goes to the Cystic Fibrosis Charity and that's great. And then what happens is I decided, well, it's too good. It's a Gibson guitar. It's too good. You can't just put that away. I have lots of pop memorabilia, um, but you can't just put this away in, in, in an attic or I have no interest in selling it. So I thought, what can I do with it? Um, I have it. What can I do with it? It's a Gibson guitar, it should be played. So I came up with a couple of ideas, and the first one is that there's lots of new bands in Ireland, or new singers, um, up and coming singers, I should say. And they might be going in to record a demo, or they might be going in to uh, record a song. And I thought, young artists or young bands starting off, they have basic equipment, and they don't have, because the nature of the business, they don't have the best of equipment, they don't have, um, they can't be throwing money around because they, they're not in the position to be earning yet but hopefully they will be and I thought well if anyone's going into a studio and they want to record a demo or they have a song that's ready to go and they just want to record it if they want to borrow this guitar because it is a good piece of kit um, to use that would be great and it might also mean that they get their music heard more than it normally would be because it is as I said it is Niall Horan Niall Horan did own it I own it now, but it, it was Niall Horan's guitar. And if they were to publicise that they had uh, Niall Horan's guitar, 
um, and that's playing on the song. He has millions of fans. I couldn't believe how big he was. Um, on Instagram, he's something like 21 million followers. So, I mean, if a percentage of those people, because of the association with Niall Horan, they listen to your music, that's going to be fabulous. So I thought that's one thing to do with it. Then the other thing that we came up with an idea, a friend of mine, Brian Kennedy. Now, Brian is a musician that you'll all probably know of. He sang with uh, Van Morrison. He toured with Van Morrison for years. Um, he was involved in river dance all over the world um, as a singer. Um, he represented Ireland in the Eurovision, did very, very well. Um, he's been a big star for a long, long time. And he's recovering from cancer at the moment and um, doing very well. And it, his attitude to it is fantastic. And uh, he's just so positive and upbeat. And I just think it's wonderful. I think he's fantastic. And um, he's still going through chemo at the moment, but he's doing, he's doing very, very well. And he's got a great attitude. He's got a fabulous attitude. So what we decided to do, myself, Brian, and Alan Hughes, who's a presenter on Virgin Media Television here in Ireland, he he's one of the presenters on the morning show, Ireland AM, they came up with this idea that uh, Brian, who's a brilliant musician, um, would teach me a song on the guitar because I don't know how to play it. I haven't a clue how to play a guitar. And uh, I have a month to learn. Uh, and when I play it, I will play the song and he will sing it and then we will put it up on iTunes and if anyone wants to buy it, they can buy it. And all the money raised will go to a cancer charity here in Dublin. And the cancer charity that we chose was one called ARC. Brian lives around the corner from me and between us, there's a building that's owned by this, this cancer charity, ARC. And they do reflexology and they help people who have cancer and who are recovering from cancer. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing organization um, so we decided that that's what we're going to do and that'll be brilliant so I'm really looking forward to that that's going to be amazing um, so I have a month to learn and we, we decided what song were we going to I wanted a lively song and my friend my favorite band are the Beatles so I wanted to do a Beatles song and uh, I thought even though it's not written by Lennon and McCartney twist and shout that's a lively one so what's going to happen I've got to learn I have a month to learn it and learn it Good enough to play it live on television and then to record it and have it released and brian kennedy's going to sing it so it's wonderful and if it gets into the irish charts i'd be over the moon if it gets into the uk charts it'll be even better but the thing is i've never been in the music i've never released anything music because i'm not really musical at all brian kennedy no problem to him he's been in the charts all over the place and all over the world so it wouldn't be a sort of something unusual for him but it'd be very unusual for me and it would raise money for another charity so that guitar is wonderful. It's raised money for uh, cystic fibrosis and now it's also going to be raising money for a uh, cancer charity. So that's wonderful. That's great. And there's, we'll see what else happens over the time. What else am I doing? Um, I told you about Pebbles and Bam Bam, didn't I? I'm letting them out now for the first time. So they're getting out uh, in the front garden and but they don't travel. They don't go too far. They're a bit nervous and um, they go next door or the house on the other side and that's as far as they go. But it's great that they're getting out. Um, what else is there? Do, do, do. As I said, the main priority now is the book that's coming out. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, everybody's been asking how I am. Everybody's been very nice. Everybody's been asking how I've been since because they know I've had bronchitis. Everybody's been wonderful. And uh, the difference is, I would say I have bronchitis. I know the, the thing when about the bronchitis, when I got it first, I thought it was, a, a, it, had, it occurred at the same time that I got the kittens. And I thought, oh God, no, please don't tell me I'm allergic to cats. Don't. But I knew I couldn't be because I've, Ructions, I fed him. He's been coming into the house for years. He's 15 now. There's other cats I fed. My dad used to breed prize cats, British blues they were. He used to breed them. So it was always around cats. But I thought, oh, please, oh, please tell me I'm not. <coughs> I'm not allergic to cats. Um, but it turned out I went to the doctor and hoping that I wasn't because I thought I'd have to give them back. I'd have to give those cats back. I won't be able to keep them. But it turns out, thank God, it was just a very bad case of bronchitis. <laughs> I wasn't allergic to the cats. I'll take the bronchitis because I'll get over that. So that's grand. So I'm fine with that. That's wonderful. Um, and I really, those cats, I, I look at them and I just think they're only five months old. They're just over five months old. They were born in under a van in a car park in an inner city area in Dublin. 
and they had a dreadful start in life and I just want to make sure that they have a lovely life now and they are having a great life they're enjoying themselves they're happy I know they are they're having a great time they're thrilled with themselves um, so I'm happy with that so I was delighted I wasn't allergic to them I mean could you imagine <laughs> I'd have to give them back to the rescue center um, but that's another thing if ever you're getting a cat or a dog don't buy them from um, puppy farms or cat farms or anything like that don't buy go to a rescue center and get a rescue dog or a cat that's the best thing you can do there's hundreds and hundreds of them um, so if you are going to get a pet and if you do get a pet make sure you know in advance what it's going to entail because you don't want to be dumping them like what other people do they dump them after Christmas and stuff like that that's an awful thing anyway I'm going completely off the point but um, Pebbles and Bam Bam I adore them and I, they're having a lovely life and that's wonderful I'm thrilled with that um, so everybody was so nice asking about me bronchitis everyone's so nice asking about Pebbles and Bam Bam and uh, I've been reading all your tweets and your messages on Instagram and your messages on Facebook and it's been lovely it's been fantastic um, the weirdest thing about that is that when I was talking about having bronchitis and I didn't go into details about what it was <coughs> but people I don't know what it is about me, but people will tell me things. Like I've had women tell me about their hysterectomies. Women coming up to me that I've never met before in my life. And they'll tell me about their hysterectomies and I'm going, oh. <laughs> and it's weird. And this man came up to me recently and um, I could, all I could do was laugh. Uh, he started telling me that he had trouble with piles. I never met this man before. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a coffin fit now. But he's telling me he had trouble with piles. So just for a laugh, I said to him, well, an old wives' tale is that if you put used tea bags on them, it sort of relieves the pain. <laughs> and then I said to him, well, nobody uses loose tea leaves anymore. So what you really need to do is, I said, just use used tea bags and stuff like that. And then afterwards I thought, oh my God, I never, I never told him that. You let them cool down. You don't take them straight out of the teapot. <laughs> Probably went home and scalded the hoop off himself. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be laughing. <coughs> he probably did. <coughs> anyway, I think that's about all I have for the moment. The book is coming out. I'm going through all the photographs. Um, what's the <laughs> Listen, um, it's coming up to the weekend. This is Thursday. The weekend's coming up. And I believe the weather might be a bit changeable. It's gorgeous at the moment. So if you are going out, wrap up. Um, and if you're not going out, just think about brushing your teeth tomorrow because it might make you more popular. <laughs> Listen, all the best. Talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>